Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box and in this week's video I'm going to show you how to create a simple and straightforward mastering template. Welcome back, I'm your host Smudge and following last week's video I thought I'd show you how to set up a simple and flexible mastering template. If you saw last week's video I spoke about five simple tips to help you to master in the box one of which was to prepare your projects like a mastering engineer. If you haven't had a chance to check out a video, then I'll leave a link in the description below. But the principle is that if you are recording and mixing your own music, then you need to separate yourself from the mixing process and view mastering as its own discipline, if you want to achieve greater results and better sounding songs. Why? Well, firstly, mixing and mastering are separate disciplines with different skill sets and usually different gear and techniques. Secondly, when mastering, you need to be objective and start to think like a mastering engineer rather than a mixing engineer. How? Well, you need to think about the song or songs as a whole and make changes, or not, based on what the project needs rather than individual elements of each song. It is also helpful to think about mastering as if you are mastering someone else's projects rather than your own, helping you to listen to the projects in a different light. And thirdly, if you don't always separate yourself from the mix process, you will always be tempted to keep tweaking the mix rather than focusing on the mastering. So how do you do this? Well, you separate yourself from the mix by exporting the tracks as a stereo file and then re-import that stereo file into a fresh project with a mastering template of your choice. Preferably giving yourself time away from the song in between mixing and mastering to refresh your ears. Just before getting to the nitty gritty, if you want to learn more about digital mastering and how you can take your songs to the next level, then be sure to subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button below and hit that grey bell and select all to be notified when we release all future videos. So let's briefly discuss DAWs. A popular question I get is do I need a specific mastering door to master tracks digitally? And the answer is no. There are some great specialist mastering doors out there but it's certainly not a necessity. Most, if not all DAWs can be set up for mastering and most will have plugins already built in that you can get started with and you don't have any third party mastering plugins. So what do you need from a DAW to be able to master a track? Well, you would need to have the ability to add stereo files onto separate tracks and sequence them as you intend the album or EP to be heard, including adding gaps between each song. You would need to be able to process the stereo files both individually and as a whole. So for example, if you have a project of five songs, then you would need to be able to process those five songs individually and together. You would need to have a mechanism to add metadata to your project. And metadata is basically the information for your project, such as song titles, album name, details of songwriters, album art, and more. You will need to be able to export your projects in multiple formats, including WAV, WAV files and MP3, but potentially DDP for CD reproduction if required and more. You will also need some form of metering mechanism, which a lot of DAWs include, but we will discuss this further. The majority of the above you can do in most doors. The metadata, file exporting and metering are usually the challenges, as these are tasks more akin to a mastering DAW. But these features can be found in a lot of other doors and there are solutions if not. Right, enough of my babbling, let's get on to the template. For the purpose of this video, I have set up three separate mastering templates in two different doors. Why such a strange number? Well, the doors I've used for this video are Presona Studio One and Reaper. For those who use Studio One will know that if you have the professional version, then you have access to the project page, which is dedicated for mastering. For this reason, I have set up a template in the project page of Studio One, but also in the song page where you do all of your recording and mixing. Why? Well, so I can show you how to set up a mastering template without a dedicated mastering function. This is why I've also used Reaper, as it's not a dedicated mastering door, but it is amazing and nonetheless and super customizable. Okay, so let's start with the Studio One project page, and here is a basic template that I created. As you can see, I dragged five songs into the project page, and Studio One has automatically arranged the tracks for us, including adding a small gap 
between the end of one song and the beginning of the next. The songs can simply be rearranged by dragging and moving the files as you see fit to achieve the sequence for your project. Unfortunately, at the time of recording, you cannot save a project page template in Studio One, so you will need to load up your plugin chain for every single track you add into your project. You can save a bit of time here by saving the plugin chain preset into the DAW and load up the chain after you've imported the tracks. The main things to focus on are the inserts for each channel, the master channel and the post channel. The inserts for each channel are used to affect the individual tracks in the project, so if song 1 needs an EQ tweak, you can tweak the EQ for that track and it will only affect that song. Likewise for compression, and if you move between the songs you can apply different changes to each song and they will only apply to the song you have selected. Next we have the master channel. I would recommend using this channel for the overall loudness of the project, and thus would start by only adding a limiter in the master channel for your template. Any changes made to the master channel will affect every song in the project, so you probably wouldn't want to add an EQ here, as any tweaks will affect all five songs, but this is perfect to be used for the overall loudness of the project to achieve a consistent loudness between all five songs and make the album or EP sound cohesive. Lastly, we have the post channel. This is the final channel in the chain, and I would recommend using this for your metering, as this will pick up the final levels post-processing after the inserts of the individual tracks and the mastering channel. In the project page of Studio One, we are spoilt with metering choices, so it's not always necessary to add metering plugins to the post channel, but I've added them in for good measure. Now, if you don't have a dedicated mastering DAW, this is generally what you will see in most doors. It's a simple page where you can add the individual tracks to build your project and then sequence them as you see fit. Things to consider here are you will need to manually space the tracks with the required gaps between the songs, and all of your fades will be done in this page. Some people like to master with all of the songs on one individual track in sequence, but personally, I find this restriction as your ability to process the individual tracks is very limited, as any change to the one track will affect every song in the project. Next, we have the mixer channel, and this is where we can add all of the plugins onto the individual channels and retain that separation for maximum flexibility. On the right hand side, you can see the master channel. This is split into two segments, one for your inserts and the post for your metering, so you can get most of the functionality from the project page. Things you don't get are the advanced metering options, so I've added free metering plugins into the post channel and you won't get anywhere to add the metadata. Now if you're releasing your music digitally, this may not matter, because when you use most digital distribution companies, they will ask you to add in the metadata and artwork separately. But if you want to export MP3 files for your own listening, then you won't be able to add the metadata if you master your project using the song page. Or not to my knowledge anyway. If you do know a way, then please let me know in the comments below. Exporting options remain the same in the song page. You may just need to add in the individual markers before rendering. Lastly, I just want to show you a mastering template that I've set up in Reaper. Reaper is a great DAW that is extremely popular, extremely versatile and extremely customizable. The features are very familiar to the song page in Studio One, but the customization is fantastic. Let me show you one trick that I learned from John over at the Reaper blog about file importing. If you click Insert, Media File, and then select the tracks you want to insert, then click OK, click Separate Tracks, then Reaper will automatically add the tracks into the template but they will all start from the beginning of the timeline. Now to save manually moving each track, you can set up a custom action to automatically prepare the project for you. I won't show you how to set up the custom action, as I don't want to steal John's thunder, but I'll put the link into John's video below, so you can see how to do it for yourself. This action will save you having to manually sequence the tracks yourself. It's awesome. Now if we look at the mixer view, then I've added in the individual inserts to each song. We have the master channel with our limiter, and in Reaper you have this great option to add your metering plugins to a monitor effects chain. Now Reaper is a little more restricted in terms of free plugins, so it doesn't have a great selection of metering plugins included, but you can download the Lulium Loudest meter, which has a free option. I'll include a link in the description below. 
This is a great solution for anyone who needs a metering plug-in but doesn't have the cash to buy a premium version. Reaper does, however, have some great exporting options already included, which includes being able to add metadata. So before I wrap this video up, I haven't discussed what plugins to include in your template. The reason being is that everyone will have different options available and different included plugins with their doors. But if you work on the basis of having an EQ plugin, a standard compressor, and a multiband compressor on individual tracks, a limiter on the master channel, and in some form of loudness metering, this is a great start. I would also recommend a phase meter and a spectrum meter, if you can get them. But don't add loads of plugins for the sake of it. I'm a big fan of the power limitations which I will discuss in a future video. Just add what you need and try to improve the songs using the least amount of processing possible. Another little tip is when you set up your mastering template, make sure you save your template with all of the plugins bypassed. So when you set up a new project, you can import some songs and play them back without the plugins affecting the sound when you first listen to the songs. In general, mastering plugins are designed differently to mixing plugins, as they tend to be more transparent because we're not looking to make drastic changes to the sound, but enhance the mix. But don't let that stop you. Work with the stock plugins you have, and then you can add more bespoke mastering plugins to your collection later. If you have certain go-to plugins that you use for mastering, then let me know in the comments below, as I'd really like to know what plugins work well for you. I hope you found this useful, and if you'd like to know more about digital mastering, then please hit the subscribe button below and make sure you hit the bell and select all so you get notified of all future videos. I've got lots of great content lined up so I hope to see you for the next video and I hope you keep safe and well.